Hi everyone, I'm Dora with the Healy Technology Report. Today we're going to have a look at a Panasonic phone system and configuring uh, SIP trunks, uh, Healy Atel Premium SIP trunks on this. Uh, so this is a great little unit. This is a TDA100 cabinet, but it's actually got a TDE um, a CPU board in it. So that's an IPC MPR. And this board here is what uh, gives us our SIP capabilities to install SIP trunks and SIP phones, uh, VoIP phone SIP uh, VoIP trunks on here. And so we need to plug in our, our cable um, and then uh, off we go. Now we're not Panasonic dealers. Uh, if, uh, if you need licenses or you need some cards, it's best to contact your Panasonic dealer. If you don't know who your Panasonic dealer is, call us on the number here on the side of the screen and I can uh, track down one. There's, uh, there's a number that we a number of dealers that we work with here in Canada. Uh, the other thing you're going to need is the software, which I believe is over here. It is. Uh, and now this software is um, only available from your dealer as well. So you can't download from the internet. And another word of advice is uh, get it from your dealer because the Canadian software uh, will only work with Canadian uh, Panasonic Canada PBXs. And so if you've got American software, it's not going to work. If you've got Canadian software and an American PBX, it's not going to work. So get this from your dealer. Um, this should already be set up on a computer at your uh, site because it would have been required to set up this uh, phone system initially. Uh, so we're going to have a look at this uh, and now we're going to click on slot and bring up our slot. Now what's really nice about the Panasonic system is what we see on the screen here is also what we see uh, for cards and layout on here. So if you're doing remote support, very easy to see what's turned on and, and what's working on the phone system. Okay, so we're gonna click on this ICP MPR, select this shelf. Uh, we are looking at this gateway. Now you see a red dot up here, uh, that means my uh, uh, gateway is out of service. You can see an in service here and we can click that and it becomes green and then we can click out of service again for it to be out of service and it has to be out of service to make changes here. If you don't have this card uh, it's probably going to be on the on the right hand side here and you can just drag it over here. Now once we're here we're going to have a look at some of the settings uh, that you need for configuring the IP, um, IP address and IP uh, network configuration on this card. Uh, so port number by default it's 35060 on Panasonic systems and you want to change that to 5060. Uh, fixed IP address is essential for uh, VoIP, any sort of VoIP calling on a uh, PBX. So make sure you have a fixed uh, IP address and not DHCP. This address here is very important as well. This is the IP address uh, on the internet for your site. So this is the IP address on your router. You want it to be static. So if you don't have a static IP address from your internet provider, uh, you're going to have to request one and that goes in here. Uh, SIP called party number available check. This gets changed as well to the disabled uh, no to yes. And then I believe this is default 100 reliability is uh, uh, enabled. Okay, timer, nothing special there. So you're going to want to click OK. Uh, if you are asked to ever reboot, you do want to uh, uh, do the reboot and then bring the system back up. Uh, this DNS server, always manual because we don't have a DHCP address, you're going to have to make it manual. If you are the network administration, um, a, sorry, administrator. In fact, either way, talk to your network administrator, find out what DNS servers you should be using. I've used some globally public ones here. So 7777 is the IBN public DNS uh, uh, server, and then 8888 is the public Google DNS server. So you want to have those. Uh, if you need to change these, you click on this common settings button up here, and it brings up a box where you can 
uh, change those. Okay, now this next one is the most important, port properties. Let's click on that. Now, it, a lot of these things I'm going over very quickly, but if you go to heliotel.ca, I've got all of these um, settings documented in uh, documents. So go to heliotel.ca, go to the top, look at um, um, how to, and then Panasonic, and all of these settings along with this video will be um, listed there for easy reference. Okay, so here we go. Uh, connections is OUS, which means out of service. And while it's out of service, the trunks are not going to work. So if you phone in or try and make a call out, it's just not going to work. We're setting a basic channel up here. Uh, and so provider name, Heliotel, uh, SIP server location, sbc2.heli.ca. And then the subscriber number, this is going to be unique. This is the primary number for your phone lines uh, and the account attached to this. So there's a welcome sheet that we send you and this information, the subscriber number is going to be on there. Now on the account page, this is where your credentials go in. So we've got a username and uh, authentication ID and the authentication password. So um, that's very private information. Make sure you don't share it with anybody because that's how uh, you end up with uh, telephone fraud with somebody uh, coming in and making calls on your behalf. So protect that information. Register sending intervals. So we're in the register tab right now. Uh, this is 240 seconds, which is uh, four minutes. So every four minutes, your phone system uh, connects in to across the internet to register itself. Now, it's really important. If it's 3600 like the default here, that's one hour, and quite often your router or firewall will forget the connection and forget the past calls in, and so you'll be getting incoming calls, and all of a sudden they'll stop, and then after about an hour or so, they'll start again. And that's because your register uh, sending interval is uh, much, much too long. Uh, NAT, this is all standard. Uh, this here, uh, diversion setting header, we've set it enabled. Um, so that's a good idea here. This is uh, particularly important. We've set the preferred identity header uh, to PBX uh, clip. And the user part here is uh, very important for us as well. That's the username. Um, um, there is a possibility of changing it to this PBX clip. And what this is supposed to do is take the uh, caller ID information, the phone number when you place a call, and uh, use it from the extension first. So if you've got different phone numbers for different extensions, it would pull it from there. Uh, and otherwise, it would default to the username. Now, I don't have um, uh, the phone numbers set up and configured on every extension. And so what happens is the call goes out as anonymous uh, to the public telephone network, and then those calls will not get completed. So you get a lot of failed calls. So with this one here, uh, your calls are gonna go through and uh, be successfully completed. Okay, voice and fax. We don't do voice and fax. Well, we don't do fax, but voice we do. Uh, this is really important. We've got G711 Moo uh, and G729A. So these need to be one and two. There's only certain um, uh, codecs that are supported on the public telephone network. Uh, 711 Moo is, uh, is the most common here in North America, and most people support the G729 as well. So if you go in here and, and add a bunch of other um, codecs that don't have broad support, there's a, a better chance of calls failing for some of the uh, providers on the uh, public telephone network. So leave it with these two here. That's the, the uh, simplest. Um, and RT, uh, this one here, RTP, RTCP, everything standard. T38 is a fax protocol. Now we're not supporting fax um, or setting it up on here, and most people don't, so it's it really is irrelevant. We're gonna pass over those. DSP uh, is all standard, and then um, this is all standard as well. So lots of really um, uh, basic config there. We're gonna go look on, uh, I, I believe here, trunk groups, here we go. So uh, we're gonna have a look at, um, uh, well, 
there's a couple things that you, you can look at here. Uh, one of the things I like to do is all numbers that get passed through uh, should have a one in, uh, in front of them, so an 11 digit number. So here, this states that when you dial a 10 digit number, it's gonna add a one in front of that before sending it out. Uh, that uh, that's, uh, reduces the, the trouble you might have with the trunk. If not, that's taken care of on the server side as well. You're gonna also wanna have a look at CO and incoming calls. Oh, I guess I need to click on something else here. Okay, so this is the where the phone numbers are assigned. So I've got a, a bunch of phone numbers here assigned. And what you can see is for this number, which is the main number I've configured, when there's an inbound call coming in, it's going to send it to extension 102, which is this phone up here. Um, now, after all of these things are done, and there's a, there's a few other things that are recommended in the document at heliatel.ca, so please have a look through that. But if you make these changes here that have gone through, uh, things will be working and you'll be able to place and receive phone calls. So I'm going to click OK here. Uh, in our slot here, the card is still out of service. You can tell by the red dot. So I'm going to place it in service. And then I, now you can see it's green. And I'm going to go to port properties just to confirm that the, uh, the trunks are, are registered. Now this does take a bit of a minute. While it's doing that, um, I'm going to remind you to check out our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Canada. We got lots of great videos on there for Panasonic and other IT infrastructure, how to do things, uh, uh, products that we use all the time and subscribe. That way, as we get more Panasonic videos up there and other videos, you'll get a notification when they show up. Okay, so it's refreshed. You can see now it's INS, which means it's in service, which is good. Now, there's one more thing that you're really going to want to do. We made a bunch of changes here um, and uh, uh, after we do the testing which we'll do in a minute so we should actually do testing and then this but we're gonna do a little bit backwards so we're gonna go in here and under tools SD memory backup so we're gonna want to click that now what that's doing is it's taking all the changes we did here and it's backing up to this SD card and that way when we turn off the power and turn it back on it's going to remember all of our settings. If we do not uh, go in and go uh, tools and SD memory backup, what's going to happen is as soon as we turn this off and turn it back on, um, it's going to forget all the recent changes. So it's really safe if you're playing with things and um, and, and just testing things out. You can all if if you don't back up, uh, you can just turn the system off and it'll come back to a working state. So we're going to uh, let's see. Looks like it's backed up, so we can place some calls now. So I'm going to call my cell phone. And there we go. Uh, you can see I am getting a call in, so we'll answer that. Testing one, two, three, four. So that's working good. And then we're going to place an inbound call as well for testing. So. Um, let me log into my phone here and press redial. And so you can see the numbers coming up there and the phone is ringing and we can answer it. Testing one, two, three, four. So there we've got calls back and forth. Uh, please check out our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Canada. Lots of great videos up there and... Um, yeah, uh, subscribe. Uh, that way, as we get new Panasonic uh, videos and other infrastructure videos up there, you'll get notifications. I'm Dar with the Helia Technology Report. Thanks for watching.